Hey everybody, I'm Vegemite, aka The Terrible Australian of Super Podcast, and welcome to the latest edition of my DVD and Blu ray updates. Uh, sorry if, again uh, for taking a bit longer in between episodes. I've just sort of been a bit busy since the last one, so I've only just gotten a chance to do this one just now, and I promise I'll uh, get. Uh, this one and also the next one up within by the weekend so hopefully I'll, I'll be a bit more uh, regular with these updates uh, for this one I, if you recall in the last video I talked about that in this episode I'm just going to dedicate to blu-rays that I just bought recently uh, from overseas so let's get right into it right now um, first up of course is D W. Griffith's uh, legendary silent film Intolerance. I was actually wasn't going to buy this for a while, um, but then I found out from a friend that it was actually on sale on Amazon, so I went and bought it right away. And it's, and it's an, a truly amazing film, and it's a film that's way ahead of its time. And I can definitely see a lot of sort of today's films with multiple characters and multiple stories happening at the same time are definitely. Uh, were influenced by this film, particularly the uh, most recent film, uh, Cloud Atlas, I think, in a lot of ways, is definitely influenced by this one. It's an amazing film, and if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth checking out. And it's interesting that he chose this, um, D.W. Griffith chose this as his follow-up after uh, The Birth of a Nation, which I haven't had a chance to see yet, but it's interesting sort of with that film and how that film was received, and then he followed up with a film that is about the topic of intolerance and it's four stories at four different time periods um, that deal with that topic and it's it, it's an amazing film and I can't wait to see how it looks on Blu-ray so that's uh, that one there. Also I got The Exorcism of Emily Rose. This is a film I haven't seen for about nine years now actually. I, I saw it in the cinema. I thought it was a really good film um, really creepy and atmospheric, and Jennifer Carpenter, who would you know go on the uh, star in Dexter, she's amazing in this film. Um, this was available in Australia for a while, but then I think it must have been. I think they must have. Um, what is it? It must be out of print now because I can't find the Blu-ray for this anywhere in Australia, so I just had to buy this overseas. And I look forward to checking it out again. And of course, uh, Scott Derrickson, after the director, he would go on to make Sinister. A few years later, so it's definitely um, one that I'm actually really looking forward to checking out again. I really enjoyed it, so hopefully it holds up on the second viewing. Uh, next one is actually a blind buy, and this one is Godzilla versus Biolanti. I'm probably pronouncing the <laughs> the other monster's name wrong, so forgive me, Godzilla fans out there. Um, uh, my friend AJ recently got this uh, a while ago, and I didn't realize this was on Blu-ray. So, and I'm actually, um, you know, with the new Godzilla film coming out soon, I've decided to uh, sort of go back and watch all the Godzilla films in the lead up to the new one. And a lot of them, I've only seen a few of them, but I haven't seen all of them. So, I'm sort of out there at the moment looking around for all the films that are on either DVD and Blu-ray at the moment. So, this one. Definitely was a must, much sorry. <laughs> definitely was a must buy if I'm doing that sort of big epic sort of uh, marathon. So I definitely look forward to seeing this as well, and as well as the other Godzilla films. So um, I'll check that out before the new one comes out. And also, I got a, one of my all-time favorite guilty pleasures: Ernest Scared Stupid. I I watched all the Ernest films all the time when I was a kid. This one I actually hated when I was young because that, if you know me, I used to hate horror films as a kid. I never watched them at all, and this one freaked me the hell out. And but it wasn't until I got older that this one ended is eventually sort of ended up becoming one of my favorite Ernest films, along with um, Ernest Saves Christmas. It's a fun little movie. It's silly. It's dumb. It's stupid. But you know, it's really enjoyable for what it is. And and it also, the the, uh, the villain, the troll in the film, is, is actually a pretty cool design and actually pretty creepy, so it's no wonder I was freaked out by it. And I'm definitely interested to uh, check that out again as well.
Speaking of another film that I haven't seen for quite a long time, uh, Jeepers Creepers. Um, I, bu I remember when this movie came out, I was very excited to see it. I really, I eventually got around to watching it when it came out on DVD and I really dug it a lot. And um, I actually bought the DVD young, like over a decade ago. Um, so I thought it'd be, it's actually a good trade up for me to get the Blu-ray because the out DVD version of the film was bare bones, had no features or anything, but this one does. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to revisiting this again. Like I really liked the film the first time, so it'll be interesting to see how it holds up on the second viewing as well. Oh, well, not second viewing, I watched it a few times back when it came out on DVD, so like I haven't seen it for quite a long time, so I look forward to rewatching that one again. And again, another it, the trend continues with films I haven't seen for quite a while. Um, next one is Free Kings, which is David O. Russell's uh, third film and this one I haven't seen since it actually came out and I think that was either 99 or 2000 I think so that's about 14 13 years since I've seen it um, and this is another one that I've been meaning to revisit for a long time so I and the blu-ray was pretty cheap to buy off Amazon so I figured might as well buy this and yeah, so I definitely look forward to checking it out again, especially in light of David O. Russell's sort of runaway success in the last few years with films like um, The Fighter, Silver Lightings Playbook, and American Hustle. So it's looking, I look forward to sort of revisiting this one. Um, also, I also got Robocop, the new, uh, the new unrated director's cut. This is the remastered version. I sort of debated whether to get Robocop on Blu-ray here in Australia, because you can buy it here, but again, um, it's like an old transfer and there's no special features on the disc. So luckily with the, you know, the new, with the remake out now, they were sort of brought, remastered this one and as well as brought all the special features from the DVD. I actually had the DVD, but I'm um, going to sell it. Um, so I, so I've got this one now. I'm really forward, looking forward to check it out, but I'm just, I'm going to wait till after I see the remake because if I see it, this one, rewatch this again. It's been a quite a few years since I've seen this one, but if I rewatch it, this, in pre before watching the remake, you know, it'll clam. I just think it wouldn't be fair for the new version, so, so I won't watch this one until after watching the new one. So, looking forward to watching that one. Um, another one I got here is on Sendies, which is a French Canadian film that was actually nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film a few years ago. And this is an amazing film, a truly, truly great film. I I was blown away by it after I watched it and and it actually and it was one of my top ten films of two thousand eleven and I didn't actually see it until probably a year after it came out. So it's a a great film um, if you haven't seen this definitely check it out it's directed by the same guy who also made prisoners so if you love that film definitely check this one and I think you'll be equally blown away by this one uh, this one was a very expensive to buy it the buy it over at UK Amazon and it was actually wasn't pretty cheap I think there must be out of print or something that's why it sort of it was a bit expensive to buy I think it was like um, 25 30 pounds or something like that but it's worth it though it's a great film and if you have, like I said you haven't seen it check that one out also I got Your Next which is one of my favorite horror films released from last year I saw it at Myth loved it saw it a second time in the cinema loved it even more um, you can buy the blu-ray here in Australia but has no features on it so I had to buy the UK version which does have special features even though I have to I hate the cover. I don't like the uh, the Blu-ray cover for the film, but it's an awesome film. Shani Vincent is fantastic. Well, she's a, not I'm not only being from Australia, but she just one of the best kick-ass horror heroines we've had in quite a long time. And it's a fun film. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it adds a little couple little clever elements to it that make it sort of stand out among the sort of the home invasion. Uh, subgenre of horror and it also it adds a bit of comedy in it as well along with the scare so that's your next awesome film if you haven't seen it uh one i've been wanting to check out again and also 
by is JCVD, which is without a doubt my favourite Jean-Claude Van Damme film. He's absolutely a fantastic in this film. An Oscar-worthy performance, I might say. And um, again, you can buy the Blu-ray for this in Australia, but this I bought this version instead because, again, has special features on it. And I look forward to checking this out again. It's a great film and just worth it to see Van Damme. And it proves that he can be a really great actor as well, besides being an awesome action star. Um, also, I got... For some reason, you can't buy this in Australia yet, but you can el elsewhere, is uh, All About Eve. One of my all-time favorite films. It's an absolutely terrific film that's brilliantly acted, brilliantly written. Um, one of the best scripts ever written. And of course, it has Betty Davis, who's amazing in the film. But everyone in the cast is amazing as well. And it's it's funny, it's um, it's touching, and it also has an interesting sort of satirical elements to it as well. And it's just an amazing film. Definitely worthy of all the Oscars it received. Um, and I look forward to checking this out. And it, it looks like it's got jam-packed full of special features as well. Hence why I bought this overseas. So can't wait to check that one out again. Also, I got another classic, The Day the Earth Stood Still. This one, uh, you know, it's weird. You can get this in Australia, but for, for some bizarre reason, you can not You can only get it in a double pack with the uh, 2008 remake. So you can't buy it on its own for some strange reason. So, And I thought the remake was pretty average, but, and I didn't really want to buy it, you know, with the remake. So I just went and bought this one from the UK, uh, from Amazon over there, and this one's jam-packed full of special features, and it's an amazing sci-fi film that tackles some really interesting themes that are still relevant today, and it's just a, an amazing classic film, and, and if you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out, it's an amazing film, can't wait to revisit this one as well. Also, I got attack the block which is this one's actually a rebuy I actually did buy the blu-ray for this uh, here in Australia a while ago but then I found out that th there was only like very uh, there was very limited special features on the Aussie version so I decided to get the UK version which had tons more and this is a fun flick I don't think it's as amazing as everyone has made it out to be but it's just a really fun and entertaining uh, sci-fi horror film um, just a, it's just fun. That's basically all I can say. And yeah, and I gave my or, other Blu-ray to Marcy, so she has her own copy of it now. So now I got this one, so I'm really happy. To check that out again. And also another rebuy is Beasts of the Southern Wild. I get like um, Attack the Block, the Blu-ray I did buy a while ago. But then I found out it was bare bones, but I sort of bought it anyway. But then I found out that the UK version had, or and the US versions of the film actually have tons more special features. So I'm going to sell my first edition of my Aussie edition of uh, Beast of the Southern Wild and sort of get rid of that one. So I traded it up with this one. This is an amazing film as well. Uh, it was made my top 10 of 2012 and I can understand some people's criticisms of it but I honestly think that I don't want to say they're wrong but yeah they're wrong um, <laughs> so forgive me for that but it's a great film just a unique and original film in a lot of ways and I definitely and I think the the film I saw it a few times in the cinema and it's a spectac spectacular looking film and I assume it's going to look spectacular on Blu-ray as well so that's Beast of the Southern Wild. Alrighty, that's the end of... Uh, for this update. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this uh, episode. Now for the next one, I'm actually going to ta go through other Blu-rays that I bought recently, but for what's interesting about this one is that I'll be talking about all the Criterion Blu-rays that I bought recently, and as well as a couple of box sets that I've got as well. So keep a lookout for that one, which I hope I'll try to 
uh, upload within, by the weekend. So keep a lookout for that one and I'll see you all later. See you everyone. Bye.